Hey, so today I'm going to be talking about the Wingate anaerobic cycle ergometer test. This is a bike test that is 30 seconds in length and has definitely been described as 30 seconds of hell or the worst 30 seconds of your life. It actually isn't always 30 seconds. It can vary in workload or timing um, a little bit to address different parts of uh, anaerobic capacity, um, anywhere from uh, phosphocreatine system all the way through up to almost aerobic um, at the very end of sort of the glycolytic range. So I'll just uh, duck off smaller here and then uh, we'll get into it. So the first thing you're going to need is really only um, to put into our software is the participants uh, weight. So to start off, I'll walk through a video of what we need, but we just put them in um, as their name and weight. Uh, we categorize it sort of by class, um, and you definitely need to know um, if they're male or female if you want to compare this to normative data later. Um, having their birth date does help because some of the normative data is stratified based on, um, based on age. So typically it would take place on this peak, this Monarch Peak bike, um, the 894E. Uh, it is a fairly typical uh, cycle ergometer with your uh, fairly heavy six kilogram flywheel. Um, and then it's got this basket where you place uh, circular weights on it. So these weights range from one kilo, half kilo, or 0.1 kilos. And what those allow, allows you to do is have this basket suspended via a little electromagnet and then with the press of a switch on the handlebars, that will drop the weight down, um, applying the entire load at once. This is a lot different than a typical cycle ergometer like the Monarch 82080 e is a very typical one, or a spin bike where you crank on the resistance. Um, basically what this does is allows us to uh, instantaneously apply uh, the exact prescribed load. And typically the prescribed load for Wingate is 7.5% body weight, but like I said, that can vary for athletic populations. It can go up to 9 or 10% even in that range. So we typically use this bike. There are more expensive electromagnetically braked bikes uh, nowadays that can create a, a very quick onset, but even our old um, Monarch electromagnetically braked bike takes about 10 to 15 seconds to apply that total load. And knowing that this is a 30 second test, the test would be half done by then. So I'm gonna play this video here and just uh, talk over it and walk us through um, exactly what we're doing and um, how we do each of the things in our uh, kinesiology undergrad labs. So I, like I said, the first thing you're gonna need is the participant's weight in order to figure out what 7.5% of their body weight is. You need to know what their body weight is. So we'll have the participant remove uh, their shoes, anything in their pockets, step on the scale, and then we'll get their weight from there. Okay, so uh, like I said, in order to get the person's break weight, you need to be able to uh, get their body weight. So here, uh, we're gonna start off using a physician scale, and we have the participant remove their shoes and step on, and while our experimenter balances out the weights to figure out what their weight is in kilos, um, and then we'll see that what his weight is, uh, and times that by 0 .75 in order to get 7.5% of his body weight. His weight comes out to 75 kilos here. So in order to calculate that appropriately, we would know that his break weight rounded to the nearest 0.1 kilo is 5.6 kilos. Uh, you can see if I pull up my pointer here, you can see the weights that we have ready. And uh, keeping in mind that the basket is uh, one kilo itself, you can see, as I was talking there, the experimenter ensured that the participant was set up at the correct seat height, that his feet are now in the baskets and he can start pedaling, making sure that the basket is up and the participant feels comfortable. Get them comfortable with the button. That's the thing I almost always do. Get them to press the button and see how the basket drops. Um, they, I prefer them to press the button while we're doing the test. So that's sort of one thing that I want them to do is get used to pressing it and knowing where it is, especially if people are new to the test um, and you you tell them, oh, I'm going to have you drop it, and their hands are low, they get really confused and they're really at speed while they're cycling, so that gets a little confusing. Um, so as, after the person has sort of done their warm-up, he cycled for, I would say, five to ten minutes. Um, on, the, on the order of five is okay. You don't want the person to burn out too much. You then load the basket up with, you can see I'm loading it up with here, 4, 0.5, and 0.1, and the basket itself is 1. So we know that that ba total basket is now 5.6 kilos. 
And then another thing I like to do just before you start the test is really ensure that either the baskets are tight and you have great baskets, or that if you really want to be dead sure that the person's foot doesn't slip out because that could ruin your entire test. Even if the person is in five seconds in this test, they can be completely gassed um, if they're really going for it. So I like to just take some zinc tape and just tape their feet in. Um, I've used duct tape for this before, but then it rips as well. So uh, after taping his feet in and just making absolutely sure that everything's secure and the patient is really sort of uh, prepped and knowing that they have to absolutely accelerate to the fastest possible speed without resistance uh, to start the test. This will feel a little weird for them to do if they're not uh, trained in it. Uh, you can see Nick here really, really cycling up Z on zero resistance. I think he got to about 200 RPM. He drops the weight and now we're all encouraging him. So you can hear us cheering him on. Really constant encouragement from all of us. See, as soon as he's done, Ian pulls the strap to lift the basket up, locking it to that electromagnet. You absolutely need to do that to get that weight off of the person's legs. There's nothing they want more than to keep that weight, like there's nothing they want less than to keep that weight on. And see how I immediately then put the basket back down to give them some resistance? They also don't want to be spinning completely free. Something you have to make sure about is that they have to stay seated. If they pop up like that, you have to push them down. Um, so going back to the test that we did before, um, once you have a little bit of resistance on the flywheel, um, so you have one kilo there, you can slowly start upping it. I added another half there as Nick is doing his cool down. Um, you can see that I'm checking his eyes, making sure he doesn't have that thousand yard stare, looking very distant, making sure he has some color in his face. With a huge rush of lactic acid into the bloodstream from the legs, you can really get somebody uh, feeling pretty sick um, and either lightheaded <clears throat> excuse me, or nauseous. So you really need to monitor your participant and if they start feeling lightheaded or nauseous, uh, even though you need to be cooling them down, get them off the bike and get their legs up on a chair and laying down. Um, per personally, I think the absolute best cool down is to keep them on the bike for five minutes. Uh, what we actually do when we're running through a ton of people is having them have one bike station beside and then w once they're done with our um, peak bike here they pop on another bike right away i don't actually let them go walk outside or anything for about five minutes um, until they're on the bike just because it's the exact same muscle groups working those muscles um, out and getting some of that lactic acid out okay so i just wanted to actually insert this clip one more time from the other angle just so you get a second sense of what the uh, experiment with the back is doing with his foot on, encouraging and making sure that the foot doesn't come up off the seat. Okay, so going into our analysis here, after the test is done, uh, we're gonna pull up our test graphs um, and our data here. So you can see that he was actually moving really quickly, almost up around 200 RPMs right when the test started. That's what I like to see. Um, I, want, I typically, if someone's uh, familiar with it, wanna see them at least up around 200, if not 220. Um, and that sort of momentum will really carry them through the test, really get their legs, uh, get their legs moving. You can see that he had a almost linear drop off in his RPMs. It's actually kind of atypical. Usually you start to see this almost um, reverse exponential where it drops off really fast. So that's actually pretty good. He was holding power uh, pretty steady uh, for that portion of the test, but that only lasted to about the 15 second mark. Typically, uh, I actually don't tell people you're halfway done. Um, so I didn't necessarily say you're halfway done and then it flattened out. That was all Nick on his own. Um, I don't like to do that just because 
Um, I think that that would necessarily um, help the person. It already feels really, really long, the 15 seconds. And if you say halfway, they kind of just give you like a shoot you a look like only halfway. Uh, so I actually wait and I only even say like maybe 10 seconds left. I think I did in this one. And then I give them a five and then a three, two, one. Um, so that's our RPM data. Uh, and then our power is based off of our workload and our RPMs. So I'll come over to, uh, I'll get my pointer up actually, if I'm gonna be pointing at it. So I'll come over to our power here um, and we can see our power in terms of uh, watts per kilo. Um, so it's, it's normalized on this graph, um, but then it, it picks up right away. Uh, this dark blue line is uh, right when the weight has sort of dropped or settled. You can see that zero seconds here, we actually have his power picking up, but this is when it's sort of steadied um, and got some constant measurement. Um, it actually declines almost to that 15 second mark, just like we were saying, but then it picks up a little bit and starts uh, bouncing around. So exactly what this is telling us um, is more about the um, decline and the actual um, sort of uh, qualitative data by looking at it. Um, you could quantify some of these little peaks and looking at um, some resiliency throughout the test. Uh, but really what we're gonna be interested in here is our uh, specific numbers of peak power, peak power in watts per kilo. These are what a lot of the normalized charts uh, will be referencing in terms of um, percentiles for males and females. Um, some, some people will use average power, but really you're using peak power and minimum power to then calculate a power drop um, and this uh, power decline. Um, so that, that is termed sometimes the fatigue index um, and that decline in power um, from peak power to final power is 340 for Nick. So probably around a 40% drop, which is pretty typical. He's a soccer player, um, so a slightly more aerobic sport, but definitely not a little bit above average um, in terms of what you would expect out of a, uh, an average male. Um, so yeah, that is the data analysis for the Wingate test. You can export this in a text file. Um, the raw RPMs and power at every single time point, I believe our sampling rate is every 0.2 seconds, uh, which is recommended in the literature. Uh, but that is it, and uh, yeah, we can uh, supply you with some data if you'd like. I'll probably leave that, um, that data text file in the uh, YouTube sort of uh, description below. And yeah, thanks for watching.